Good day, dear televiewers and subscribers. I am Teresa G. Reyes from Honorato C. Perez Senior Memorial Science High School, your Earth Science teacher presenter for today's episode of DepEd Hour Teletuan. Are you ready for today's lesson? Here is our objective. Explain how seafloor spreads. Before that, let's recall our previous topic about how rocks responded to stresses. You have learned that tensional stress stretch and pull rocks apart and that the cord along divergent plate boundaries where two tectonic plates were torn away from one another. Today, we will study a geologic process that occurs also at divergent plate boundaries. That geologic process in which tectonic plates or large slabs of Earth's lip spear splitting apart from each other is called seafloor spreading. How does seafloor spread? It's a crucial question that we need to explain the answer by focusing on evidences that describe seafloor spreading. Let us begin. First proposed by Princeton geologist Harry Hammond Hess in the early 1960s, the seafloor spreading hypothesis suggested basaltic magma from the mantle rises to create new ocean floor at mid-ocean reaches. On each side of the ridge, seafloor moves from the ridge towards the deep sea trenches where it is subducted and recycled back into the mantle. It is now generally believed that crust and part of the upper mantle are under tension at the spreading center. Thus, the ocean crust is pulled apart, allowing magma to rise to the surface and the whole oceanic crust is part of a conveyor belt system rising up at the mid-ocean ridges and eventually sinking down at the oceanic trenches. We can explain seafloor spreading by considering the usual process at work at divergent plate boundaries, which evidently describes how seafloor spreads. First, the ocean floor can explain the occurrence of seafloor spreading. As two tectonic plates slowly separate, Molten material rises up from within the mantle to fill the opening. In this way, the rugged volcanic landscape of a mid-ocean ridge is created along the plate boundary. Second is the mid-ocean ridge. Remember that mid-Atlantic ridge is the longest mountain chain on Earth? Mid-ocean ridges are parts of chain of mountains some 84,000 kilometers long and are the largest topographic features on the surface of the Earth. These ridges are spreading centers or divergent plate boundaries where the upwelling of magma from the mantle creates new ocean floor. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge, for instance, is a slow spreading center. It spreads 2 to 5 centimeters every year and forms an ocean trench whereas the East Pacific Rise is a fast-spreading center. It spreads about 6 to 16 centimeters every year. Take note that age, density, and thickness of oceanic crust increases with distance from the mid-ocean ridge. Third, the evidence of deep sea trench. Deep sea trenches are long, narrow basins, which extend 8 to 11 kilometers below sea level. Trenches are formed by subduction, in which two or more tectonic plates converge. An older, denser plate is pushed beneath the lighter plate and dip into the mantle, causing the seafloor and outermost crust to bend and form a steep, V-shaped depression. Fourth is the geomagnetic reversals. When research scientists use magnetometers to study the ocean floor, Measurements of magnetic variation showed that alternating bands of rocks recording normal and reverse polarity were arranged symmetrically about mid-ocean reaches. Basaltic magma forming at mid-ocean reaches serves as a kind of tape recorder recording the Earth's magnetic field as it reverses through time. The discovery of such magnetic stripes provided powerful evidence that seafloor spreading occurs. Fifth, the age of the seafloor discloses seafloor spreading. Scientists notice that from the ridge crests, sediment becomes older and the seafloor becomes thicker. 
Since the oldest ocean crust is so much younger than the oldest continental crust, scientists realized that something was happening to the older seafloor. The oldest known ocean floor is dated at about 200 million years, indicating that older ocean floor has been destroyed through subduction at deep sea trenches. To sum up, how seafloor spreads can be explained through 1. The ocean floor As two tectonic plates slowly separate, molten material rises up from within the mantle to fill the opening. 2. Mid-ocean ridges This where slowly spreading ridges are the sites of tall, narrow, underwater cliffs and mountains, and rapidly spreading ridges have a much more gentle slopes. 3. Deep sea trenches are developed adjacent to subduction zones where oceanic lithosphere slides back into the mantle. Number 4. Geomagnetic reversals reveal the continual process of seafloor spreading which separated the stripes in an orderly pattern, such as a specific magnetism of basalt rock determined by the Earth's magnetic field when the magma is cooling. Number 5. The Age of Seafloor In seafloor spreading, the youngest oceanic crust is found at the ridges and progressively older crust is found in moving away from the ridges towards the continents. In the end, new geographic features can be created through seafloor spreading. For example, the Red Sea was created as the African plate and the Arabian plate tore away from each other. Eventually, geologists predict that seafloor spreading will completely separate the two continents. The Sinai Peninsula, as it connects the Middle East Asia with North Africa, to join the Red and Mediterranean Seas. Thinking that seafloor spreading creates new crust, while subduction destroys old crust, these two forces balance each other so that shape and diameter of the Earth remain constant. This is all for today. I hope to see you again in our next lesson. Again, this is Teresa G. Reyes, your Earth Science teacher here at Devon Hour Teleteruan. Bye and good day!